after seeing and kind of digesting the, the code of conduct and, and the rules, do you think this is something that's, that's workable, something that's needed for the House of Representatives? I think it is. Uh, I think now more than ever, and I think one of that is because of the social media that's involved, um, uh, mischievous activities that are performed by members of the legislature can be uh, found a lot quicker and reported a lot quicker. And, and for nothing else, it helps protect the member from false accusations that might appear. And I think that's very important uh, in today's world, is being able to answer any type of allegations that might be false because it does spread so quickly on the social media. It would actually be an opportunity for a uh, member to come in here and say, hey, uh, I've been accused of this, let's clear the air because I want to have my story be told. And so it gives an opportunity for them to, to vindicate themselves uh, on certain level. How much information will the public actually know? It appears that there's quite a tight confidentiality rules involved. There are, and I think that's important, and that's why I was curious how the Oklahoma Ethics Commission does it when there's an ethics violation from the election standpoint. Um, you've got to have a set of eyes look at it, I think, and determine whether it, it merits uh, any kind of action, and so that's why I'm, I'm particularly pleased that the, com the committee will have the first opportunity. Actually, the chairman and vice chairman of different parties will be able to look at the accusations and say, there's no merit to this. This is as far as it needs to go. You know how this building works, and there's bound to be leaks, possibly by the person who is making the allegations. What do you do in that case when the press finds out that you know, Danny Morgan is being investigated. The, the thing I like is the penalties that we put on that. You have to um, sign a sworn affidavit that these are true facts uh, with, with the penalty of perjury attached to it. So that if someone's going to make an accusation, they have to think very long and hard that this is, in fact, an accurate. I'm not just mad at the individual or I just don't want to get back, with a, a, a back at them against something. But I really do believe this is a violation of the code of conduct that needs to be addressed by the commission, uh, excuse me, the committee, as well as maybe even the full membership. And, and because the safeguards we've put in place that you can be charged with perjury uh, if you found that you've... Uh, leak that information or told someone uh, when you swore that you wouldn't, um, then, then I think there are some protections there. Do you think that even a finding of nothing happened here should be released to the public, that, you know, Representative Morgan was investigated and we found nothing, so that your opponent can't say, well, he was investigated by... And I think that's very important, and that's why I think it, uh, we've allowed the committee to make that determination to say, look, there wasn't anything here, and we want to vin you know, let you be vindicated by your peers and say there's nothing here. And I think a compelling argument can be made by the accused member uh, as to why that would need to be released. And you uh, brought up a kind of case that, that – could theoretically uh, affect you in that uh, the, the jurisdiction is within one year of the event happening and a member having been a sitting member at the time, but theoretically if you were to do something in the next six months, you could be brought before the commission or at least your case a year from now. And when I first read that uh, provision, I thought, why are we trying to punish a member who's no longer here when the only punishment that can be rendered is something that deals with the House of Representatives. Uh, but I thought Chair Chairman Bands made a very good point, and there are many of the members of this body who run for other offices, county commissioner, uh, go back to their local counties and run. I think that would be information that the voters should know that in the last uh, year or six months, even last day of their service as a member of the House, they had a serious misconduct violation. Uh, and didn't think anyone would hear about it. And so I liked the idea of being able to hold us accountable up to the very last moment that we're in this building uh, for what we do. And, and this is a way to do that. And finally, uh, uh, Chairman Ban said at the beginning, this is uh, a going to be a long process. We're not under a, a time frame here. Do you think, obviously, these, the, the code and the rules aren't going to be in place for the start of this session, but will there be something do you think that you'll be, you'll be voting on in your last session as a member? You know, I hope we'll be to that point, but if nothing else, we can leave this body with the framework in, in place so that the new legislature that is seated for the 2013 uh, session uh, would be able to then implement all of those new rules and be able to operate immediately and not have to go back and reinvent the wheel, that those of us in this 2012 session will have the groundwork laid and the procedure established and then formally adopted in 2013 if necessary.